we're telling our children, you know, find your purpose, uh, find your passion. I think that's all nonsense. How should an 18 or 19 year old what, know what passion or purpose is? Welcome to The Path, where I, Ryan Roslansky, sit down with the biggest change makers, innovators, and thought leaders in the world. At the end, we'll see what turning point shaped the journey of these incredible success stories. Today, my guest is Toto Wolf. Toto is arguably the most powerful man in motorsports. He sits at the helm of Mercedes Formula One as CEO and team principal, and his team holds the record for most wins in a world championship. That's a big deal. But before his success in racing, Toto maneuvered through a series of personal challenges and career pivots. He jumped from a life in banking to a stint in steel manufacturing and ventured into the dot-com investing world. Here's how Toto Wolf paved his path. I want to go way, way back in time to a young Toto uh, growing up in Austria. And maybe the first time you can remember at all what you maybe wanted to be when you grew up. My first thoughts about uh, a career only started when I was um, in my late teens. Uh, I wanted to become a racing driver. I remember um, due to my father dying very young and financial hardship that I wanted to be independent and uh, and live my life. I um, somehow stumbled uh, over racing. A friend of mine uh, was a racing driver in Formula 3, which is a junior formula, and we got to visit him on a racetrack. And once I put my first feet in the, into the paddock and I saw these drivers racing their, their machines and trying to be in control, this is in a way how I found my identity. This is what I wanted to be. How do you go about becoming a race car driver? Yeah, it was so far away because obviously I've never done any any um, go-karting, which is a key and if not the essential part to be a successful racing driver. I had no financial means um, from the family, so I had to raise a sponsorship, uh, which I did. I made a nice presentation uh, how you could invest in, in my career and um, basically gave it to every single parent in school and their friends of the family. And by doing so, I raised enough money to buy myself a racing car and and start to uh, compete and participate in the junior formulas. Toto starts securing sponsors, allowing him to compete in different championships. He was finally living out his dream of being a race car driver, but it didn't last. F1 was getting a reputation for being dangerous after a string of accidents that led to deaths and injuries. Toto's sponsors begin pulling out, leaving him without the means to race. So just three years into his racing career, he pivots and quits. He decides to go to college for economics to focus on the business side of the sport. But then he drops out of school to take an internship at an investment bank. It was terrible. It was boring. I cried my eyes out because of because of that Mm. decision. But I knew it was uh, that's what I needed to take. So let me bring you up to speed on a couple years of his path. Even though he hated that banking job, he loved learning about the business. So he dives deeper into that work. He takes a sales job at a steel manufacturer learning everything he can about large-scale production and how to successfully navigate business transactions. Then he changes course and starts his own consulting company, taking on a paper manufacturing client on the brink of bankruptcy. I got into M&A because one of the possibilities of saving our own business was to buy that business eventually. So I got to learn that from a legal angle. What's the due diligence? How do we analyze whether a business is sustainable? So suddenly one door out of a crisis opened another one. And my understanding of investment banking in that sense came naturally because I had to learn in order to save our business. Toto begins his journey as a venture capitalist in the late 90s and realizes there's a lot of potential in tech and starts adapting. His investment company becomes one of the first tech-focused VC firms in Europe, eventually expanding globally. He starts backing early-stage tech startups right at the height of the dot-com era, making solid bets on companies that would later make successful exits. How did you end up finding your way back towards racing? It was a coincidence because a friend of mine, ex-racing driver, called me and said, should we do a six hour race. During that race, I found out that I, I haven't lost the skill. So I continued like a, like a hobby. And uh, so I started to support some young drivers, uh, drivers that like me 10 years prior had no means. Um, so I was paying for them. And so this is how I actually came back into motor racing from a totally different angle. Toto takes his investment skills to the world of racing. He buys a stake in a company that builds Mercedes race cars, leading it to a successful IPO. He establishes a reputation as someone with sharp business instincts and a knack for navigating the industry. Toto catches the attention of the owner of the Williams Formula One team. 
He wanted Toto's help turning around the team's finances. So Toto joins in as an investor and is eventually asked to become the CEO. Did you hesitate at all about saying yes and accepting that job? I said to him, I never run any organization. I was a venture capitalist. Uh, but yeah, I felt so much energy and, and um, passion and excitement that we won a race in Barcelona, a team that was nowhere anywhere near a podium. We had some really good uh, few more weekends during the year. And, um, and I got approached by Mercedes and they said, can you tell us why your team that is not a works team is able to win a race and be competitive whilst <laughs> we are not? And I said, I can help you, but I don't want to bad mouth any, anybody, but I give you an opinion. So off I went, not thinking about it um, anymore. And a month in, they came back to me. Would you want to run it? For me as a motorsport person, that was like, you know, it's a knighthood. If you're being asked to be head of motorsport and be a team principal of a Formula One team, it doesn't go any better. So I became a co-owner of the team and run it since then. Toto would go on to lead Mercedes AMG Patronus to back-to-back -to -back success, guiding the team to eight constructor championship wins. Off the track, Toto's work ignited explosive growth in the team's valuation, making it the second most valuable team in F1. Now, Toto is known as one of the most successful executives in F1 history. You didn't have the traditional upbringing or the linear career path that would eventually lead someone to become a venture capitalist or, you know, a team principal. When you are looking to hire talent, do you also look for those unique paths or that different factor? It's th that is one of the most complex problems today. I remember in my first years, um, I sat down with my uh, chief people's officer and we went through the skill set that was needed and what we were looking at an organization. And he said, well, we are looking at uh, the top universities. So I said to him, uh, what about someone that hasn't been great academically, set up various tiny businesses? And Paul said, no chance. Wouldn't even go through the first round of applications. So I said, so that's me. I would have never qualified for a job here at Mercedes. And what does it say? Yeah, I, I mean, I can't tell you how much that resonates. It's not just where someone went to school or what their previous company was, but does someone actually have the skills needed to do the job? Looking back at your path, it is the definition of a non-linear career path. When someone asks you, uh, Toto Wolf, what is your best career advice? What do you tell them? For me, it is intuition. Um, you kind of feel whether it's wrong or right. I don't feel that I've ever taken a risk. It was always calculated. If I could cope with the worst outcome, then it was a calculated risk and I, I was prepared to uh, have a certain easiness about things. I know we have a lot of resp responsibilities to our families to, to make a living, but still don't lose the easiness of a, of a child to, um, to embark on a different path. We're telling our children, you know, find your purpose, uh, find your passion. I think that's all nonsense. How should an 18 or 19 year old what, mm. know what passion or purpose is? I was a complete idiot until I was 23 or 24. I didn't even know what, this, you know, what a venture capitalist was until then. So leave um, teenagers and young adults the possibility to be all rounder, to look at various jobs, to try, and then eventually focus on one thing that feels right. And if after five years, it doesn't feel right anymore, then do the next thing. So here's my takeaway. Total Wolf is living proof that linear career paths aren't the only way to the top. And skills and grit are the true currency. Like Toto, your career will hit moments when your plan gets thrown out the window and you're left with the daunting task of making a pivotal life decision. For Toto, when things didn't go his way, he didn't pause and wallow. He proactively sought out new opportunities. When he lost the means to race, he took a chance on studying economics. And later, when his business was in trouble, he pivoted to venture investing. All of this successfully led him to a place where his work, business smarts, and his passion for racing intersected. So if you find yourself at a crossroad, facing an unexpected challenge, or simply yearning for a change, remember Toto's path. Embrace challenges, seize opportunities, and stay adaptable. It's not the start, but the journey and how you navigate it that matters.